Father John Zulsdorf is up next. But first, the Vatican recently sent a survey to the world's bishops seeking their feedback on the implementation of Pope Benedict's 2007 motu proprio Samorum Pontificum. Now, in that papal edict, Benedict made the traditional Latin mass or extraordinary form more widely available in the world's dioceses at the discretion of the priest. Now, the nine-point questionnaire that the Vatican recently sent out was issued by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith in March. And it asks, among other things, if the extraordinary form has been a positive or negative influence on Catholic life. Joining me now to offer his insight into the survey and whether the traditional mass is being threatened is priest, blogger, and commentator, Father John Schulstorff, also known as Father Z, joining us from Madison, Wisconsin. Father Z, thank you for being with us. I want to start with what Pope Benedict had to say back in 2007 about the old right and his reasons for issuing Samorum Pontificum. He said this, there is no contradiction between the two editions of the Roman Missal. In the history of the liturgy, there is growth and progress, but no rupture. What earlier generations held as sacred remains sacred and great for us, too. And it cannot be all of a sudden entirely forbidden or even considered harmful. It behooves all of us to preserve the riches which have developed in the church's faith and prayer and to give them their proper place. And that was uh, Samorum Pontificum. Uh, Father, what in your estimation has prompted this Vatican survey of the extraordinary form of the Mass? Why now? Well, for one thing, let's remember that this isn't the first time there has been a survey. There was one back right. in uh, just a few years after Summorum Pontificum was issued also, because uh, right at that time, it said that there was going to have to be a survey. So this is not the first time this has been done. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, I think, I think the first one was done in the year 2010. And so... Uh, just three years after uh, the original, uh, the motu proprio was released. So now we're 10 years out. Well, it seems like a reasonable period of time to, you know, check and see what the status questionis is. So from that point of view, okay. it's not that big a deal to have a survey. And there's one thing that I want mm -hmm. to add to what you read from Pope Benedict. Okay. Sometimes there's a challenge issued about Samorum Pontificum, that this was just a concession that was given... Uh, to people who couldn't make the change or they were nostalgic mm -hmm. and so forth. Well, Benedict was asked about that by Peter Savold in uh, his book, you know, Last Testament, I think it's called in, in English, mm -hmm. and uh, Ultima Conversazioni, I think in Italian. And he was asked directly about this, and Benedict stated categorically that it was false. It's for everyone, not just people who couldn't make a change or who were nostalgic or whatever. And um, so we, we should clear that up. Those are two points that need to be cleared up right away. Mm -hmm. well, why is there resistance, do you think, among some bishops and lay leaders to this celebration of the Mass according to the 1962 Missal? Well, for one thing, uh, I think a lot of, a lot of priests and, and bishops like to be in control and they like to be the ones in the know. And if they've never learned the older form, they're very threatened by it and very uncomfortable with it. And they don't like mm. to be out of control, as it were. Mm. Uh, another thing, too, is the, the, the very style of it and the content of it has a very different sound from perhaps what their formation was in seminary. Mm. Suddenly, they are being confronted with how to present clearly concepts like penance, guilt for sin, propitiation, judgment, and so mm. forth. And this is a little out of their, a little out of their wheelhouse, as it were. Wheelhouse, I think those yeah. are two reasons. Yeah. Another reason also Fa is because I Go think ahead. that they take it as, a, as an implicit criticism that what they've been doing is wrong. And that, that can be a little threatening. Mm. I want to get to the leaked 2020 survey that was issued by the CDF. Uh, they have requested answers by the end of July. Some of the questions asked have been interpreted as veiled threats against the extraordinary form. For example, we'll put this up on the screen. If the extraordinary form is practiced there, does it respond to a true pastoral need, or is it prompted by a single priest? Or this one, in your opinion, are there 
positive or negative aspects of the use of the extraordinary form? Or does it occur to you that in your diocese, the ordinary form has adopted elements of the extraordinary form? Father, when you first read this, and assuming the document is legitimate, what was your reaction to the questions posed? I mean, you know the old saying about a poll, rephrase the question until you get the answer you want. Well, certainly, I, I think there's an element to that. Um, as I read this thing, my I have only an English copy of it, but the, mm -hmm. the way that it's phrased strikes me. Uh, this was written by someone whose English is strong, but not the native language. So I, anyway, that's one thing. But you're right about mm -hmm. these, a couple of these questions are loaded, like that, the number two um, if the extraordinary form is practiced there, does it respond to true pastoral need, or is it promoted by a single priest? Well, let me let me yeah. just offer to you that sometimes it's just a single priest in a diocese who serves the Korean community or the, the or the the deaf community. Well, does that make it any less pastoral that there's one priest doing it? And if mm. you ever want to find a marginalized group in any diocese right now. It's the people who want tradition. There is no group more marginalized than they, and they deserve mm -hmm. pastoral care as well. Now, that yeah. point about uh, um, if there are uh, if there are celebration if if there are elements of the extraordinary form being incorporated into the uh, uh, ordinary form, well, that's a legitimate question because Samorum Pontificum raises that and says that there shouldn't be a right. mixing of the rites. On the other hand, Benedict XVI was also looking for a, an, a mutual enrichment, an organic growth. Mm -hmm. And so slowly but surely, this is how that happens. Now, so mm -hmm. if a priest decides after the consecration to hold his fingers together, I've had priests write to me and say that some people, other priests and, and some people, just absolutely freak out because he's holding his fingers like this, or he isn't spreading his mm -hmm. arms out wide, but maybe keeping them over, mm -hmm. the, over the corporal you know, in case he has right. articles in his finger. These are elements from the older mass. But remember, they might also be confusing things that are perfectly good in the Novus Ordo. Latin, ad orientum right. worship, Gregorian chant. Those aren't, or, or the style of vestments. Uh, they, mm -hmm. you know, they, there are a lot of people out there who don't know what they don't know. And sometimes they can I get agree. confused about this thing. There's another yeah, question. There's a parish. Know, you know, every time I attend the Latin Mass, or, or even if I'm, I'm coming to a later Mass and the Latin Mass is letting out, what I see is young families, young people who are intrigued by the mystery and the grandeur and the silence of those Masses. They're, they're, they've, they're drawn to the mystery of it. What's wrong with that? Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. As a matter, as a matter of fact, that's, the, that's precisely the point of liturgical worship. It isn't for, mm -hmm. you know, necessarily self-affirmation. It's to be transformed right. in an encounter with mystery. And they're finding that in the older form of Mass. And the very fact that, that if you watch, con you know, congregation after congregation, uh, uh, people in the pews from this church here, this church there, this country there, whatever, you'll find that very often children are far better behaved at the older form of Mass as well, because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're seeing something that is just different from normal life, and there isn't the mm -hmm. the, the impulse to to act up or or do you know, whatever it is yeah. that children do when they're distracted. So um, this is a this is a very important thing, I, and I, I I think that the very fact that our churches that have the older form, the traditional form of mass, I don't like saying Latin mass because you know the Novus Ordo yeah. can be celebrated in Latin. Right. Let's say traditional Latin mass, but those mm -hmm. those places are filled with young families. And that in, in a time when we're about to see a demographic sinkhole open up under the church, I think that is a little, it's a little threatening. Uh, so yeah. there's a lot of growth, you know, the explosive growth. In the, in the, in the time, uh, at the 10 year anniversary after Summorum Pontificum is released, I heard the statistic that from about 2007, where there were maybe 50 regular masses on a Sunday people could go to in, the, in these United States, by mm -hmm. the time we got 10 years out, there were over 500 places. That's explosive growth. And that has to tell uh, the people in the big chairs that something is up with this. Mm-hmm.
Well, let all flowers bloom, I say. And, and if young people are drawn to it... Uh, Can I add one more thing? I know yes. that the bishops uh, are going to be consecrating both Canada and the United States tomorrow to the Blessed Virgin Mary, yes. which is a terrific thing. I've been making an appeal, uh, a public appeal to bishops to exercise their dioceses before they do this, because mm, in, the, why? in the tradition of blessings and consecrations, there are always exorcisms before blessings and consecrations. There were exorcisms in baptism. There were exorcisms of water and salt before holy water is made. There was exorcisms of buildings mm. before they were consecrated. Um, Isaiah, um, the angel came to him with a hot, burning hot coal to cleanse his lips before he was given the office of prophet. This is the constant pattern, purification before blessings. So I beg the bishops out there, you don't have to tell anyone you're doing it. Just use the exorcism in chapter 3, title 11, and the Roman ritual and exercise the diocese before you go on with the consecration. Please do that. Hmm. Father John Zulsdorf, thank you so much. Father Z's blog and commentary is at fatherzonline.com. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much.